About two weeks ago, I finished watching the TV show Avatar, which I'd watched probably over the span of about two months with an episode every day while I ate lunch. And when it finished, I felt kind of sad because now what do I do with my time? I think there's a feeling of emptiness that comes with finishing a show or a story that you've invested a lot of time in. It was two weeks ago I finished watching it, but I still sort of half feel like I haven't left the world of Avatar yet. Like it's still in the back of my mind and I'm slowly having to adjust to leaving it behind and just letting it slip away. Um, which all sounds kind of stupid, but I think you could probably empathise with what I'm saying. Good stories give you feelings of adventure and excitement and a chance to escape from ordinary daily life. And even when it is only one episode you're watching a day, meaning there isn't that much escapism because there's still lots of monotonous life you're doing around it, but even then you're still daydreaming about this world sometimes and you get the music stuck in your head and it's like you've still got one foot in there. You're still thinking about what will happen next in the story. It still takes up a considerable spot in your mind, even when you're going to work and other things. But then when it actually properly ends, that's different. It'd be like walking to the end of the earth and looking out across the edge. Somehow, there's nothing left. And I've got this theory about stories. I might have mentioned it at some point on this channel before, but I don't think I have. Um, it's that stories teach us how to cope with the experience of loss on... A very small scale. I mean, I mean, obviously it's a small scale, but we suffer thousands of losses in our lives all the time. You know, obviously. On the extreme end, it's loss in the sense of death and close relatives dying, but there's loss in moving home, in changing schools, in the end of a holiday, in in the ways you see yourself change as a person throughout your life. And there's obviously just as many gains in our lives as losses, but Ideally, we get better at managing the feelings and we get more familiar with the experience of loss as we go along. Like, there's a kids TV show in Britain called Blue Peter. I assume there's similar stuff in other countries, but um, as part of the show, the presenters always kept some sort of pet in the studio, the, the pet for the show, specifically because, and the reason they did this was because one day that pet would die and then they could share in that moment with all the kids who watched the show and they would all learn about the experience of loss and how Blue Peter presenters manage it. They get to they get to talk about grief to these kids through the experience of them loving and getting used to this pet on the show and then losing it. Now then, um, if you've had a pet that's died, you'll know exactly how we feel, but it is something that all pet owners have to cope with at some time in the animal's life. That was about teaching kids how to cope rather than, you know, hushing it all up and saying the dog's gone to live on some distant uncle's farm or whatever. Um, and that is a tangent, but the point was simply that we experience loss when stories end. It's not a big feeling of loss, obviously, but it is still there, especially for little kids who aren't used to loss yet. And if it's a good story that ends in a good way, with a nice conclusion and a proper sense of closure, then we come away feeling quite good. We're sad the story's over, but we've had a proper feeling of uh, goodbye, let's say. We're satisfied with how it ended, which is important in helping us get over the loss. If the story ends badly though, we feel cheated and quite angry. Even worse if the story doesn't end at all, like if it's a show that got cancelled two seasons on a cliffhanger or something. That leaves you feeling like your your love for the show meant nothing. You know, it, it probably teaches you that you shouldn't emotionally invest in stories because they'll just abandon you without any sort of goodbye and leave you feeling distraught. Just like when you've had bad relationships, you know, some um, sometimes you come out of them feeling right I'm going to keep my distance and never love anyone again because it only ever leads to hurt. It's a bit like that on a very, very small scale, isn't it? And it's for that I think all good stories have to end. That you shouldn't keep stretching them out thinner and thinner with endless sequels and reboots because that's killing the show off bit by bit without proper conclusion or proper goodbye. Because you just watch the show deteriorate and get worse and worse until it's just run out of steam completely and you end up getting fed up with the thing you once loved and that's a sad experience. It's how I feel about The Simpsons really, you know, once one of my favourite shows of all time, but they've run it into the dirt, flogging a dead horse with all these later seasons, and it, it damages my view of the show somewhat. To briefly come back to Avatar though, I wanted to say, well I wanted to say I think the show ended pretty well. Some of it was a bit rushed, um, but it was still a proper conclusion with closure, yet, as I've said, I'm still left a bit empty two weeks on. And I guess I was thinking it's interesting what our experiences with shows ending might say about us as people, because 
there's lots of different reactions we might have. You know, Avatar has ended, and I could go and watch its sequel, The Legend of Korra, which um, I, I guess would save me some of the grief for now, because then I won't have to leave the world behind yet, not until I finish The Legend of Korra. Or I could dive into some other show and get emotionally invested in that as a way to avoid feelings of emptiness, um, which I guess is like distraction, really. Or I could start re-watching the show again, or I could do what I seem to be doing now, which is a sort of brood, I guess, you know, mope about over the ending, because I don't feel ready for anything else yet. <laughs> it's all very much like a breakup when you say it like that, you know, I'm not ready for another relationship yet, I want to be on my own for a while. Or there's other people who very quickly get with someone else for, like, a rebound, as it's called, um, which I think it would be if I started diving into another show now, that'd be like the rebound show. And maybe the re-watching of Avatar again, maybe that would be like going back through all the photos and memories of your relationship with your ex, or something along those lines. But personally, I'm not ready to get invested in another show yet because I haven't finished feeling sad about Avatar, about having to leave Aang and Zuko and everyone else behind. I, I guess I want to sit with that sadness for a while, at least until it softly and suddenly vanishes away. You know, once um, it's not still lurking in the back of my brain, is when I'll be ready for something else. So until then, I'm kind of just messing about on YouTube instead of watching shows, or um, I watched a couple of old episodes of QI, for example. That's just a panel show. There's, there's no story there for you to fall in love with and get lost in and emotionally invested in the same way. Um, which perhaps makes QI my rebound show. <laughs> I'm not sure. As a final idea, though, I'll add this, because... There have been times where I've gone back and rewatched old series a few years on, old good dramas that I was emotionally invested in the first time, which is always good to do, you know, you never quite enjoy them at the same level as the first time you watch them, but they're still good because you notice new things and there's enough that you've forgotten that it still surprises you at times. But I've noticed a pattern I have when I rewatch old shows, which is that I normally lose interest and fall off right before the ending. Like, I rewatched Breaking Bad last year for the first time since it came out, but I stopped after Series 4, and I rewatched Life on Mars at some point, but I didn't bother with the final episode, I gave up after that. And various others, enough for me to have noticed a pattern over the years that I, I kind of lose interest before it gets to the end. It's like I'm trying to save myself whatever feelings of emptiness I must have felt the first time I finished watching those shows, so I tail off before the ending happens. And I guess that's like skipping the chance to say goodbye to someone that you know you'll never see again. And I wonder if four or five years from now I'll re-watch Avatar but slowly lose interest about halfway into the third season. Um, and I wonder what that says about me. It's easy to start a show or a story. Um, it's all fun and exciting and new in the beginning, but the endings are more difficult. So, how do you find it when you finish shows? Um, and what, what do you tend to do? You know, let me know in the comments, um, as, as well as any other general thoughts you might have on the subject, or if you think this topic is completely ridiculous, which it might be, I don't know. Um, either way, like the video if you did like it, or it made you think, or something. Subscribe if you haven't already and it's something you fancy doing, otherwise just hopefully see you next time.